So I, I would say I'm a level five anime enjoyer. I don't really watch a huge amount of variations of anime, but I have a ton of long series that I absolutely love and I've stuck with them the entire way through. I'm up to date with One Piece. So that's gotta at least count for something, right? So today I got permission from this wonderful creator that made an every anime genre explained in 12 minutes video. And honestly, I need this because there's so many that I just don't understand. Like what does harem mean? So let's, uh, let's find out. Shonen is one of the biggest anime genres, even though it's the most misunderstood because it's- Yeah, this is the one that I understand. This is shonen. Actually, shonen means boy in Japanese. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, uh, just practicing my Nihongo. <laughs> don't mind me. It means boy. So I'm assuming it means an anime that's targeted towards like younger males is my assumption. Also like jo Jose at the start, that means is one woman. Biggest and I, I don't know what Sinan means. I don't know what that means. Shonen is one of the biggest anime genres, even though it's the most misunderstood, because it's not okay. actually an anime genre. Shonen directly what? translates to boy, meaning- Ah, see? I, sorry, I just get really excited about learning a language. That it's less of a genre and more of a demographic. And even though Shonen is technically targeted towards young boys, a huge amount of people outside that demographic also consume a Shonen anime. Make well, yeah, I mean, it's not just targeted towards young boys, because like, I'm, I'm an adult, I'm an adult man, I'm a-, I'm a big masculine adult man now who's 28 years old. I was gonna say seven, then I realized my birthday's passed and I'm now pushing 30. That's fantastic. I wish I didn't have to think about that. But also a lot of women enjoy Dragon Ball stuff, right? Like Yu-Gi-Oh is a shonen, right? Like oh, the, the the girls, girlies, women in the chat, you guys you guys enjoy this kind of stuff too, I would assume. It's a pretty useless distinction when trying to differentiate them. For example, Death Note and Chainsaw Man are both published in shonen magazines, making Wait, really? Death Notes? I, usually I assume a shonen is like a battle, a battle show. Them both technically shonen, even though their tones and themes couldn't be farther apart. This makes shonen a very nebulous term when describing anime. But anime fans will still use shonen as a genre. But when you hear this, you can assume that they are usually- Wait, I love this editing actually. Hold on. This editing is great. He's my favorite anime character. Dude, in every single one- That's too hard, man. I mean, I love Luffy. I love Straw Hat Luffy. But I also love Mob from Mob Psycho 100. He's great. Talking about- and I love Vegeta too. And I, no, Kaiba. Kaiba's my favorite anime character of all time. Kaiba, he's great. Battle Shonen. This is an actual genre because it does consist of Shonen anime where the primary focus is on battles, usually with superhuman abilities like My Hero Academia or Bleach. The first modern battle Shonen that popularized the genre would probably be Dragon Ball. Examples of great battle Shonen that. Oh man, I'm getting sad now. I'm getting sad. Rest in peace to go. Dragon Ball's footsteps would be Hunter x Hunter or Naruto. Examples of more mature Shonen would be Full Metal Alchemist or Death Note. See, this is something that I need to catch up on because I've never seen Hunter x Hunter. I have seen like half of Death Note, then someone spoiled like a very big thing that happens. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I don't care anymore. I started to watch the original Full Metal Alchemist and then just kind of fell off because I was like, eh, this is kind of boring. It's not really holding my attention. But I've heard the Brotherhood is like, the greatest show of all time, maybe, who knows? I don't know, I mean, Attack on Titan's up there too. Comedy anime are all about making- Oh, comedy, okay, I don't think I've ever actually seen a comedy anime. I always feel like a show that is specifically made to be funny would struggle at being funny because it doesn't have anything else to back up its humor. Usually comedy and anime is to juxtapose the other, the other themes that are going on. But if your th only theme is comedy, like, is it actually funny? You laugh, but you should get a bad rep from the anime community for- well, not making us laugh, but it's important. Okay, yeah, see, exactly. dude, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. You might have to try Konosuba. I heard of Konosuba actually, Kieran, I've heard important of that. to remember that as English viewers, we lose a lot of context when an anime is translated. Sometimes Japanese humor relies on wordplay to inject humor into an exchange, which can often get lost on us. Another gripe anime fans have with a lot of comedy anime is that they'll heavily rely on a single joke with changes only happening to the surrounding context or situation. But this yeah, I don't, I don't get the whole pervert thing. Like, it's obviously a cultural difference. I just don't get the whole pervert thing. This isn't always thing. a bad thing. Examples of good comedy anime that focus on a single punchline are One Punch Man or Sakamoto-kun. Wait, One Punch Man counts? Dude, One Punch Man is an amazing- I guess it does count, in a way. Although it's not entirely based around comedy. It's it's more like, you, you watch One Punch- Do you watch One Punch Man because it's funny? Or do you watch One Punch Man because it's- because it's freaking amazing and it, it, you get excited when he punches. Examples of other good comedy anime that don't rely on a single joke would be Nichijo or Psyche K. Seinen is a much less- This, okay, I'm assuming that this means it's essentially you take shonen and then you make it for like older folks. So it's all bloody and stuff. I'm just, I'm getting that because of the fact that his Vinland Saga is here. So it's just the more bloody version, That's right? It's a nice term to most casual anime viewers, but it essentially just translates to youth. 
Youth? Okay, well, maybe I'm wrong As then. In, it is targeted towards young adults, specifically adult males. Seinen is again not a genre, but instead a demographic. An easy way to tell if a manga is published in a Seinen magazine is if they directly use the word young. One of the most widely known Seinen manga, manga Berserk, was originally published in a magazine called Young Animal which often contains pinups along chapters what? of the manga. Because what? seinen manga are targeted towards an older the audience, hell? they often deal with much darker themes and storylines. <laughs> ah, yes. This is the more edgy storyline where we can show tits. Examples of this are Vinland Saga, where themes of revenge and slavery are prominent, and Berserk, which is personally my favorite oh. thing of all time. Oh, no. Where does his arm go? I feel like I should read Berserk. I don't know if I can get down with the... I tried to read Berserk and I was looking at the first few pages and I was like, I don't know if I can get into this. <laughs> Sci-fi is an anime genre with a heavy emphasis on- Wait, is this Gurren Logan? Oh my god! Wait, Gurren Logan is one of my favorite shows ever. Technology or futuristic elements. And it is significantly different from Western sci-fi. Sci-fi used to be a very popular genre in anime, most likely originated- I mean, this is where all of the, the Gurren shows come from. Not Gurren shows. The big robot shows is the mechas. That's what they're called. The big mecha shows. They're sci-fi, I would assume. Like, is Attack on Titan a mecha? <laughs> because it's a... No, okay. With the anime something. Astro Boy. However, the golden age of sci-fi is widely regarded to be in the 80s and 90s, meaning that many anime fans aren't well-versed in the best sci-fi anime, including Akira, Ghost in the Shell, and Cowboy Bebop. It's worth noting that shows like these popularize the cyberpunk genre across the world, which is why I would point you towards cyber- Wake up, Samurai. We got an anime to watch. Edge runners, if you're looking for- Oh, wait, hold on. This is a great show, though. This is so good. A modern sci-fi anime. Slice of Life is a controversial genre among anime fans that most avoid because a lot of people find it boring. The general- Wait, I mean, okay, I don't really understand why you'd be like, ooh, where the punch? I don't understand. I can totally get why people would like Slice of Life anime, and I think I've, I've watched a few Slice of Life anime. I've seen, like, you know, I've seen, like, school days and stuff like that, so I understand why people like it, because it's just like watching a place in the sun where people go and try to buy houses, or the antique road show where people find something in their house and they go and sell it and they're like, mm, well, I don't know about that. Or like porn stars or something like that. Just regular stuff, no action, no explosions or shooting the guns, just someone doing something in their daily life. The right? idea of slice of life is, like the name implies, to capture a slice of someone's regular day-to-day -day life. It's usually characterized by a much slower pace with more emphasis on what we would consider mundane experiences. Some people think that slice of life means no development happens across the series, but that's not necessarily true. Oftentimes, the genre is paired with comedy, drama, or romance. Early slice of life anime that were very influential include Azuma Kadayo, Hidamori Sketch, and Lucky Star. If you want a modern slice of life to enjoy, the thing is, I don't think I can enjoy a slice of life anime that was just people in high school because I cannot personally relate to that anymore. And that's really just a me issue. I would recommend Kobayashi Dragon Maid or Nanan -Nan Biori. Romance is another controversial genre because it often takes way too like I said, I've seen school too days. long for anything to actually happen happen relationship wise but this i also tried to watch my dress up darling and i was like <laughs> i got a few episodes in and i was like this is good but i feel weird cultural differences in western shows the romance genre isn't necessarily about whether the couple will get together it's about if their relationship will stand the test of time but with romance anime it's more often about if their relationship will happen at all that's why oftentimes a romance anime will take its time getting the main characters together there are also many common tropes in which a person mishears the other confession causing I hate this. Oh my god, the slight like mishearing of something and then they just assume that that's the truth. Oh, I hate that so much. And uh, someone not explaining, they're like, no, no, wait, I, I can explain. And then like, boom, shut the door. And like, no. Like, oh god, like, just, just open the door and be like, no, this is what actually happened. The entire on, relationship man. dynamic to be reset. This can be frustrating and personally, I hate the trope too. So if you want some good romance anime that still take a while to develop, but don't use those tropes, check out Kaguya-sama or Golden Time. If you want a romance anime that that's more akin to Western TV shows, check out Horimiya. Although I will say that I think the manga is better. Isekai literally translates- Is there gonna be a lot of that? Ah, oh, no, the manga is better. The manga is better, though I will say, I am a manga reader of two manga right now. My Hero, there's only like four chapters left as of recording this, and One Piece. I will say, the My Hero anime might be a little better in most parts, apart from some seasons where it gets really boring. One Piece, I think is better as a manga because my God, they really fumbled that anime.
They really had to stretch that bad boy out. I hope when they remake it, they actually cut so much of it. They need to cut all of it. <laughs> they need to cut so much from the One Piece anime to make it generally watchable for a normal human beings, not like insane people like me. To different or other world. It's technically a subgenre of fantasy that revolves around a person from our world being transported into a fantasy one. And why is it always seemingly fantasy worlds? It's, you could do so much with Isekai. And it's always like, oh, I've been transported to medieval kingdom land where now I can use magic and I have a sword and shield. This can happen through many different ways, but in Isekai, it usually happens using a portal or reincarnation. While many people think of Isekai as a modern genre, it's actually a very old genre. The idea of going to another world was always a popular one. I mean, think about it. Alice in Wonderland came out in 1865. Alice in Wonderland is an isekai. I love that. Also, isn't it kind of depressing that one of the most popular variations of anime is like, what if we went into an entirely different world because this one kind of sucks and is boring. Really Wait, so what if we were in a different one? Me. But if we're talking about modern isekai anime, the originator can actually be traced back Sword to online? Zero no Tsukaima, which helped popularize Naru K web novels. If you want to learn more about the history of modern isekai, check out the video I made on that subject. But basically, Zero no Tsukaima fan fiction is actually what inspired light novels like ReZero, which in turn inspired stories like Mushoku Tensei. However, the popularity of adapting light novels into anime really began with Sword Art Online and its huge success. Yeah, there Despite it the is. Dude, our Sword Art Online was such a big thing. Now everybody dunks on Sword Art Online. It is ruthless the way that people talk about this show now. I've never seen it. I am a completely neutral bystander in this entire situation. I've heard that it's terrible, though. SAO isn't really an isekai to begin with. Fan oh, it's not. Well, I guess, wait, isn't the premise behind Sword Art Online that someone plugs into, like, a headset and then they are... Uh, if you die in the game, you die for real type of thing. Like they, they get put into the matrix. If Sword Art Online is an isekai, then therefore the matrix is also an isekai. Fantasy is a very all encompassing term for any story with fantastical elements. This means that it can actually include shonen fantasy like Hunter x Hunter or Full Metal Alchemist, but it also includes high fantasy like Free Ren. It covers dark fantasy like Claymore or Berserk, but it also covers historical fantasy like Demon Slayer or Inuyasha. Well Oh, wow, that's just all over the place. Jesus Christ. Well, this just can encompass anything. Anything that is like in the past and has any kind of magical elements all of a sudden is a fantasy. Can you do a fantasy in the modern age? Aren't quirks from My Hero Academia just a form of magic, essentially? I mean, we show them working with like body parts, like, oh, Bakugo uses a sweat. But like, come on, dude, it's magic. It's 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 magic, come on. In the West, we tend to think of fantasy as mainly just high fantasy. This is because Tolkien's work have been so influential to our art. In anime, fantasy usually takes inspiration from from a many number of things. So in a certain sense, you could say that fantasy is one of the biggest genres in anime as a whole. And for that reason, it's hard to give a- Yeah, it's very all encompassing. Like it's almost entirely encompassing. Specific for the genre. Shoujo is another demographical term and not necessarily a genre. It directly translates to girl. So shoujo anime are more often targeted towards younger girls. Shoujo anime tend to be romances or dramas, but a big subgenre that emerged from shoujo is the magical girls genre, where girls transform into superheroes with magic powers. One of the- so you could say Powerpuff Girls is a shoujo f show. First examples of a shoujo anime is Sally the Witch, who is technically a magical girl. However, not all magical girl anime are shoujos, as again, shoujo is a demographic and not a genre-defining term. Other important shoujo anime include The Rose of Versailles and Sailor Moon. If I had to pick a shoujo series that acts as Damn, that one on the left looks kind of insane. Sort of Sailor Moon has to be the most popular variation of this, right? Sailor Moon is huge. So many people watch Sailor Moon outside of that demographic. Originating point for modern shoujo, I might pick Fruit Baskets or Sailor Moon. But to be honest, as a guy, I don't really watch much shoujo, and I'm pretty unqualified to talk about this. In yeah, uh, as a... <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> as, as a... As a guy, I also watch uh, only really violent things with lots of blood and, and big muscles and anything cute. Uh, sorry, that's actually gay, so... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So if anyone in the comments has a better idea of what series really popularized modern shoujo, let me know. Anyway, recommendations for modern shoujo that I enjoy would be Yona of the Dawn and My Next Life as a Villainess, which is actually a new subgenre. <laughs> My piece. Next Life as a Villainess? All roads route to doom or something? Jesus Christ, what a name! And involve someone and Entering the world of a dating sim for women, but as the villain. I also suspect that this villainess subgenre will continue to grow. Jose is a 
Oh, Jose means woman. Sorry, I have to say it before he says it. Another demographical term, but it translates to woman, meaning that- Yep, yeah, sorry, I, I had to say it before he said it. Most Jose anime are targeted towards adult women. However, like Shonen and Seinen, the lines between Shoujo and Jose are very blurry. In fact, the thumbnail for this video uses Nana as a Jose anime, but Nana is actually a Shoujo anime because it was published in a Shoujo magazine. Now, the reason I still put in the thumbnail is because I haven't actually watched any major Jose anime, and this is the only mature Shoujo- I don't think I've ever heard of this genre before. Jose? I, yeah, I don't think I've ever anime heard of I've it. tried. That being said, I can't give any great recommendations, so I'm just using my animalist catalog here, and using that, good modern Jose anime to try would be Chihaya Furu and Rakugo Shinju. Spo it's so funny because <laughs> I say I haven't watched really much anime. I started watching the Love is Blind Japan version, and you know what? I've been really enjoying it so far. Sports anime is one of the- Hey, sports anime! You know what? I, sports anime? Great. Love Haikyuu. Very cool. Love Blue Lock. Blue Lock, very good too. So watching a basketball one then stopped, but I'm pretty sure that was really good too. The oldest and long-lasting genres, usually depicting a high school or collegiate sports team and their journey. Because sports anime are very widely based on the sport itself, they are all pretty different, but if I were to point to a show that exemplifies modern sports anime, it would be Slam Dunk. The Slam Dunk manga single-handedly increased the popularity of basketball across Japan. And yeah, basketball is genuinely like pretty popular in Japan in now, the same isn't it? Vein. I, I know baseball is very popular in Japan. It, in fact, baseball is like, what's it called? Yaku or something like that. It's one of the only like sports names that is, it's just its own Japanese word instead of being a loan word like basketaboru or like saka or anything Haikyuu like that. has done the same for men's volleyball across Japan. These are examples of more realistic sports anime though. And it's worth noting that- That I have learned so far. This could be completely incorrect. It's just that I've learned so far. There are more unrealistic sports anime where characters border on the line of superhuman. Prince of Tennis and Kuro no basket are good examples of shows like this. Where Dude, it's so funny though, because you'll see someone like looking at a ball and it'll be going in slow motion. And it's just, it's just someone playing football. If you could imagine these people playing football in real life and they're like yelling at each other and they're like having speeches while they're like running with a ball. In, in theory, this is a really funny, this is comedy. This is also comedy because if you imagine the real life view of what people would be experiencing if they saw this, it's really funny. Two people are doing speech, the evil villain speeches, mids like dunk. Pictures are pulling off insane moves that aren't usually possible. If you want a good modern sports anime, I would personally recommend Blue Block. Although, I think the manga is better. Echi is a slang term in the Jap- Wait, hold on. Echi is- Isn't this kind of like- L lewd in his language that means different things in different contexts. It can be an adjective meaning sexy, oh, okay, dirty, yeah, naughty. All right. It can be a verb meaning to have sex, and it can even oh. be a noun where someone is basically a pervert. Echi as a sure. genre is characterized oh. by hypersexualized moments in a show, often dubbed as fan service, where the plot. W okay, I'm. I shouldn't pause well, on this. <laughs> and backwards. Okay. It's, oh my god. Okay. I, let me just. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not really a fan of like super hypersexualization of, especially like it happens a lot for women characters. It happens to male characters as well, like don't get me wrong, but it just seems to get in the way. Like fan service isn't actually fan service when you're making your show lesser for having had it. That, you know what, something is really bad for this is Fire Force. Fire Force is so bad for fan service that it genuinely ruins the show and makes the characters just completely boring. It, it's one dimensional and it really annoys me because I love the idea behind Fire Force. I just wish they wouldn't do that so to much. To force its characters in certain positions. Although shows can have a little bit of fan also, there's some, the thing that like makes me most uncomfortable about like the fan service thing is so many anime are set in like high school, so they're like very young or underage women. Is uh, it's just it freaks me out, man. I don't like fan that. Service and not being etchy when a show regularly pounds these scenes to the viewer or places emphasis on the sexual themes in the show, it qualifies as an etchy. Now it's worth noting that etchy isn't really a genre you'll find on its own because if you only wanted sexual content in a show, then well, you might as well watch hentai. All right, guys, I just got these right. brand new headphones. <laughs> Oh. Mecca what? is a <laughs> what was that? Hey, Mecca, they can put Attack on Titan. Very old subgenre of sci fi that's all about giant robots. A big reason that it's gotten so popular is because of the toys that were marketed towards Japanese citizens. In Mecca, there are two main subgenres super robot and real robots. Super robots what? often refer to super sized, impossible looking mechas, while real robots try Garen to match Hagen. real world physics and limitations. Before Gundam, Titan super Fall. robots were the most popular subgenre, but Mobile Suit Gundam caused a revolution in the mecha genre, popularizing the real robot. However, that wasn't the end. Wait, Gundam is a real robot? So is Gurren Logan's the super, right? And then, the, I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you what the difference would be. The super robot genre. Evangelion popularized Even I just the super heard robot talk about genre it. once again. And I'll 
Evangelion's a mecha show? Dude, I've just heard that people talk about Evangelion, Evangelion, they're like, oh, it's like so complicated. And I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know it was a mecha. Well, the mecha genre is still widely popular, owing favors to super fans who buy and build Gunplas. Its popularity has definitely dwindled in the last decade. If you want recommendations of solid mecha shows today, I would recommend you Evangelion and one of my all-time favorites, Code Geass. More Oh, wait, I have seen Code Geass. I've seen the entirety of Code Geass. I do like it, but I don't think it's as good as everybody makes it out to be. And I am a politics nerd too, and I love Big Robot. Modern iterations of Gundam that are supposedly good are Iron Blood Orphans and The Witch from Mercury. The music anime genre is a little interesting. This is a whole genre? How does it- really? Because in the West, many of us associate the music genre with musicals, where characters will break out into song and- yeah, like has been hotel is a musical anime. Dance like in Disney movies. But from my knowledge, there are very few anime that are actual musicals, which is probably a cultural difference. When music is heavily used in an anime, it's because the anime's focus is on music itself. So it's better to think of music as a genre like sports, where the main characters are usually involved in making the music themselves. Music <laughs> is like sports. I haven't read The Art of War. I can only assume that this is Popular true. Popular anime in the music genre include Love Live, which started the anime idol trend, K-On, which greatly popularized the slice of life and music genres, and if you want a modern music anime that's mixed with comedy, I would really recommend Bochi the Rock. The harem genre is a- Oh, okay, okay. What is going on with this? I truly do not understand. How, how is this, is this not just hentai? Or is it not because there's no actual nakedness in this? Is it just everything but the nakedness? What's even the point? A subgenre of romance that heavily focuses on polyamorous relationships, typically with one male and many females. Sometimes the genre can be twisted into a reverse harem, where the woman is a I like how it's called a reverse harem and not just at also a harem. It's like, no, 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 no. This one's backwards this time. A main character with multiple male love interests. Personally, I'm still waiting for the bisexual terror that is a mixed harem, but anyway. Oh yeah, when's that gonna happen? He's clearly too scared to do that. Happy Pride Month, everyone. Harem as a genre gained popularity due to dating simulators, which explains why most harem anime used to be based on visual novels. KFC dating sim? Now this, this is what we've been waiting Most for. Most anime fans look down on harem anime because they're pretty unrealistic in portraying how a boring average guy can pull so many baddies. But let's be honest, the vast majority of harem anime is for horny teenagers who want to self-insert with the main character. But at the same time, there are- Yeah, it's just like a fantasy. This is like a, oh my God, like what if this was me? Like which girl would I choose? A good amount of harem anime that still use its premise to tell a compelling story, which often leads to something called a shipping war where fans choose their best wife. Dr. Disrespect be pulling up now, dude. Who <laughs> in hopes that they end up with the main character, aka some of these people need to touch grass. <laughs> An anime that helped create this trend and cause the harem genre Oh yeah, didn't Naruto make his own harem? Trickstall in popularity was Love Hina. Examples of modern shows that have a battle royale of baddies would be quintessential quintuplets. If you want examples of a harem that I think are genuinely good, I would recommend The World. Battle Royale? What the hell is that? You gotta watch a hundred girlfriends who really, really, really love you. <laughs> what? Hontoni Daisuki. Only God knows and a hundred girlfriends just for being a little yeah, more realistic. There it is! <laughs> What? What is this? How can you even have like a hundred characters? What? But also fun in the development of all the romances. If you found any mistakes in the video, leave a comment because as much as I've been watching anime, you know, damn Hey, near a well, now, listen, listen. Obviously, I can't I, watch every single genre the same. I thoroughly enjoyed and as always, this. Thanks for watching. Peace. I know that was great. That was fantastic. Please, if you're interested in anime at all, do what I'm doing right now. Boom! Hit that subscribe button on Ari Kendo's channel. And uh, there is a ton of other anime related videos that you can take a look at. Every anime studio explained, every hentai genre explained. I might not be taking a look at that one. Uh, so you should go and watch it on your own time. <laughs> you definitely should.